Hey everybody, Reeve here, and here. Okay, I didn't write a script, so we're just gonna fucking wing it. Um, you wanna know something I like? I've always liked slimes, you know? You know, the little guys in video games, the one that gets beat up all the time, you know, it's like the default enemy, you know? I love them. They're so cute. And the only thing that slimes are missing is a game to take care of them, you know? It's like, um, it's like, it's like The Sims, but not really. It's like, well, it's like a game where you take care of slimes. Yeah. You follow? So, you know what? I'm gonna make it. Actually, it probably already exists, but I'm gonna make my own version. Because, um, what else am I gonna do with my time? <laughs> so, yeah, I've been really busy, hard at work this past month on this. So, you know, that's why I, I got a lot done. And I made a lot of progress on it. Um, yeah. So, why don't we just get into it? <laughs> That's what she said. I don't, that doesn't make any sense. What the fuck? Okay. Alright, so let's just get started with what I did. So, first off... Uh, I, I So, I implemented a lot of systems, but none of them are super fleshed out right now. Like, I implemented a day-night system, which darkens the screen after a certain set amount of time. Um, I can just show that off real quick. It's not super great, but it's, it's still, obviously, a work in progress. So after three seconds, it enables the tint. Now, obviously, it doesn't look great. Work in progress, you know how it is. Um... So that's, that's not really a main thing I'm worried about right now. Uh, I have HUD elements for the wood, the stone, the money. So basically this game is going to be like... I, I guess Roller Coaster Tycoon would be a pretty close assessment because of like the building system. And then you have to... Uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon slash Clash of Clans. I would say it's a lot more like Clash of Clans, except there's no like combat. But, so the things I have working right now is this little slime guy moves. He may run into the wall, which would not... Yeah, so he moves with his little animation. He's a cute, cute little guy. I got house. I got stone, wood, and a trading. So this one has no implementation yet. These two are sort of implemented. Basically, what you would do is you click on it. You interact with it, and then you choose the slime you want to work there. I don't have the choosing yet, but if you click it, it starts generating. Same with this one. It just creates the other resource. Very simple. The building system doesn't let you place on place tiles, but it will let you place on free tiles. Um, yeah. Oh, and... Okay, he's escaping, but... If you click, you can inspect him and see the information, you can claim him, and then he gets claimed, you know. So I, I see it being green slimes will just show up randomly and you can claim them. And then I see a breeding system, which allows you to create new slimes, like something like Dragon Veil. Vale. Um, I haven't fully figured out how I'm going to implement the breeding system yet. It's going to be pretty compli complicated because... I want it to include the color of the slime and the day and the night, and then I have to somehow figure it for figure out, like should I'm not gonna I obviously shouldn't implement every possible combination, so I have to decide characteristics and what those characteristics produce, you know. But I mean, essentially, that's that's what I've got going on right now. Um. So, I mean, I'm going to run through the code. So, build mode's pretty simple. When it starts, um, it, it chooses the inspector, which is the slime inspector, and then when you're in build mode, it can disable, so you can't inspect a slime while you're building. Very simple. Um, there's the can place tile map, which is like... Um, so if you notice when you're placing and you can place, there's a green thing. But when you can't place, there's a red thing. That is a tile that is being constantly updated um, on a separate tile map. So that's very simple. Uh, if you're currently placing, 
Then it takes the mouse position and shoots a raycast straight down to find out where um, where your mouse is. Or it doesn't, sorry, no raycast involved. It just finds out where your mouse is based on its position. And then if that position, so then each tile is a 32 by 32 pixel. So if, um, if it's greater than 32, it gets, I don't know how to describe it. So every 32 turns into one. So 32 would be one. 31 would be zero. Uh, 64 would be two. You, you follow? So basically every 32 is one tile. And so it just takes the position, divides by 32, and finds out what tile your mouse is on. Um, then obviously if you click, it checks if there's a tile there. And if there is, it doesn't let you place it. But if there isn't a tile there, then then it sets the tile to um, whatever tile you're currently placing. It adds it to the list of tiles that are that have a. It sets it adds <laughs> that tile to the list of tiles that have things in them, so you can't place something there again. That was very verbose, but hopefully you understand. Um, and then it finds out what, what type of building it is, and if it's a generator, then it sets its resource type and creates a, um, a canvas object so that you can actually interact with it. Um, yeah, so it sets the, the type of the, t the tower. I'm not playing balloons. It sets the type of the tile, it sets the resource type, it sets the generation time, um, the position of the interactable object, and then it adds it to the list of tiles. And these are just called by the buttons to go in and out of build mode. Okay, this is the script to interact with the buildings. Um, like you saw before when I clicked on it, it would open a canvas and then I could um, set the slime. You know, it's very uh, bare bones right now, but obviously it's a work in progress. So what this one does, it sends a raycast straight down and if it hits, so the the canvas object is actually just a collider. There's just a collider there, and if the raycast hits that collider, then it knows that you're currently hovering over it, and you can open the canvas. So if it, the hit that collider is an interactable building, and you press mouse button one, um, first if you're if you, if you're currently inspecting not that object, then it sets the current inspection to null, or like so if you're, <clears throat> for example. If the, you click on something that you're not currently inspecting, it checks if some other canvas is open because you were inspecting some other building. And if that is true, then it turns off that canvas and it sets current inspection to null. And then obviously it moves on and then it sets the canvas of the one you want to interact with. It sets that canvas to active so you can see the HUD elements. And then <clears throat> it sets the current inspection variable to that object. Uh, and if you click on a building that already has its inspection HUD open, then it just closes it and it sets the inspection to null. Set active false, transform get child zero, that is the canvas. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Okay, the inventory is very simple. Um, it sets variables, wood text, stone text, money text, so it can update it. Um, and then it sets the text to however, whatever the, the amount you have is. So that would be if you're loading a save file that already exists, because it wouldn't be zero. Um, just future proofing it, I have not implemented any sa sort of save system yet. Um, but I didn't so what it does is when it changes the amount of wood stone money you have it calls change wood and if it's removing an amount it it passes through a negative variable so it decreases the amount of wood you have but if it's um if it's increasing the amount of wood you had have it passes a positive variable and then obviously it increases the amount and then it updates all the resources so all the text gets updated to the new amount. Very simple. Um, so for the new, for the new. Okay, so for the inspector, it firstly 
finds the camera script, which allows you to drag, to click to drag and move the camera. Um, so that's, so you can set it, um, you can, that's so you can make it so you can't move the camera when you're inspecting a slime. So if you can inspect currently, it sends a raycast straight down. And if, if the hit dot collider is something and you're not currently inspecting something, it makes it so you can't move the camera. Um, that's so if you click on a slime, you can't also move the camera at the same time. You get what I'm saying? And then if hit.collider.tag equals slime, so if you're currently, um, if the mouse is currently hovering over a slime and you press mouse button one, um, the slime is set, the slime variable is set to the current game object and then it passes inspect slime. So the inspect slime function, basically <clears throat> it gets the info of the slime that's in a different script. It just has its age, its status, its name, things like that. If it's claimed, then it sets the text to be claimed, and it removes the claim button. If it's not claimed, it sets the text to wild, and it activates the claim button. Um, then it sets the text to the name of the slime, the type of the slime, the age of the slime. Um, and then it sets the inspector camera active, so you can see. Um, and then when you click the button to claim the slime, it just sets the status of the, slime, the dot claimed variable to true. It adds it to the list of claimed slimes, which is under the slime parent. Um, so there's a parent object that all the slimes are under, and it sets the, uh, the slime, it adds uh, the slime to a list that is a part of that uh, game object. And then the claim button is set disactive, and then it changes the text. Very simple. Okay, here's the script that I use to actually move the slimes. So, when it's awake, it sets the rigid body. So, I'm using awake here because obviously slimes will be initialized at different points in time during the um, game process. So, when it's awake, it can move. It sets the rigid body and the animator, and then it starts the core team, which is just the, um, it's like a function that, I'm, I'm, I assume you know what a coroutine is, <clears throat> I assume you know what a coroutine is, but basically it's just like a function that uses a time scale, I guess. I, I don't know really how to explain it perfectly, but you can use stuff like wait for seconds, which you can nor normally use in a average function, so it just starts the quarantine move slime, <clears throat> and then while well, can move is true, and if can move is true, it waits for seconds, random seconds, 1 through 10. Uh, and then it chooses a random angle, negative 180 to 180 degrees. And then it sets the start time to time dot time. And then the velocity is the speed times the sine of the angle times degrees to radians. And the cosine of the angle degrees to radians. And then it normalizes it. And then it plays the... Um, slime bounce where it's just like he squishes and gets up and down again um, while he's moving and that's moving to true and so while the time is less than the start time plus a random number between a random amount of seconds between three and eight um, then it it waits for one second and then it looks again and so this just keeps him moving for an amount of time three to eight seconds and then after that's done it, it stops playing the slime bounce, and it sets its velocity to zero. Um, and then if, it, if he collides with anything while he's moving, then it stops his momentum, and it um, play, and then it stops the slime bounce from happening. So that's what the slime move script does. For building info, it the inventory is the player, uh, the player, well, the, there's a player object, but there's no, like, player entity. Um, and then the inventory script that's part of that. And so if working slime, if there's a game object set to working slime, so like if you have set a slime to be working at this building, active is true, otherwise active is false. And then it starts generation when you click the button or whatever. And then it sets the working slime. So currently it just sets it to the only slime that's in the game scene. But normally you would choose, and it says active to true, and it starts to generate resource quarantine, which, um, while it's active, it up it adds 
it updates resource. So if it's stone, it adds stone through the inventory. If it's wood, it adds wood through the inventory from the change script we saw before. It just adds one. Um, and then it waits for seconds, whatever the um, amount of time is, the cooldown between adding resources. And so that's what the building info does. So this is the script I use to move the camera. Um, there's an origin, there's a difference, uh, vector 3. And then so, well, on start, the camera can move, obviously. So if you get mouse button one down, the difference is the point of the mouse minus the point of the camera. So basically when you move, your mouse, your mouse will... Um, it will move based on where the mouse is, not based on where the camera is, if that makes sense. Um, if drag is not true, then drag is true, and it sets the origin to where the mouse currently is. Um, and then if you're not holding mouse button one down, drag is set to false. And then if drag is set to true, the position of the camera is the origin minus the difference. Very simple. Took me a while though. I I had to find some, cause I was going for other things and it was just kind of a mess. I did a while ago, so I don't remember exactly what I was doing wrong. But yeah, that's that script. Um, this one's very simple. There's a day length, a night length, a night tint game object, and a bool to do the game cycle, and then a day number, which is just um, going to be used for like deciding age and and time and things like that. So it sets the night tint. Uh, disactive, and then it starts the day sequence controller, which is, while it's true, if the due day cycle is, you know, a thing, then day number is added, and then it waits for the seconds of the day, and then it sets the night tint true, and then it waits for the seconds of the night, and it sets the night tint false. Very simple. Finally, this is just all the information about tiles, so that um, it's it's able to place and everything works correctly so i mean these are all the script that i have done yeah all right lastly we have my to-do list um so there's the tasks which is the actual buildings that generate wood and stone i guess that's what i meant by tasks um and then there's a way to make money which is the vendor selling either the stone and wood is raw or like it's going to ask for a specific material that you got to craft something like that pens so you can send your slimes in there and then they're not roaming around and it's easy to find and you can put things in there to help them you know stuff like that breeding obviously which is going to be pretty complicated i have to find some way to do that slime condos for tasks for like um like wood or or crops or something the water slime would make it easier make it faster you know certain slimes have certain um effects and if you combine two different types of slimes, it betters it. You know what I mean? It's like it's like combos. Um, improve the day-night cycle. Music building system, which is done. Claim slime. Well, I do still need to do the slime info screen. Slime list button. So just a way to view the slimes. Uh, inside of buildings. So for like the pens, you can go in there and you can put items in there to like play mini games, stuff like that. Um, yeah, I mean, that's what I have to do. Um, I have a lot of ideas, but I also missing ideas. But, I mean, I think I have a good, pretty good plan. Um, I'm just currently trying to get into a state where it's playable and there's, like, an actual game loop. Um, it's very, very early stages, if you couldn't tell. But, um, yeah, that's, that's what I did. So, as you can see, I did a lot this month. Don't, don't say, wow, Reeve, it took you a month to do that. Don't say that, okay? Now, what you should be saying is, wow, Reeve, you did all that in a month? And then I will reply, yes, because I'm awesome. Don't say that I didn't do a lot, because I did. Okay, I've been really busy, really hard at work. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Um, I'm probably going to continue working on this. Uh, there's a lot I need to do. A lot of ideas I have, but also not a lot of ideas I have. So if you have any ideas for my game, let me know. Please. I'll, um, I'll 
credit you if I implement it. No, no guarantee that I'm going to implement it. But, you know, no guarantee I'll finish the game either. So here we are. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's what I did this month. Let me know what you did this month down in the comments. <laughs> it's so fucking stupid. Um, yeah. So, hope you liked watching. Um, nothing else from me. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Okay. Bye now.